Okay, guys, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for all the birthday messages. Uh, the ones that I got yesterday, the ones I'm getting today, and the ones that are going to be on this video. I just want to say thank you so much. I really appreciate each and every one of you guys. And I'm just so glad and I'm just so happy that I inspired some of you guys. And, um, and uh, yeah, man, thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> yes, and very happy he was until disaster found him when he returned back to his homeland of Congo, he would be seen in a video dancing and trying to sleep in a casket with somebody who had already been laid in that casket to rest and minutes after that, he would be found dead. What happened to Christian Kazadi is a mystery that we are still trying to solve and today's true crime story is going to bring you details of what transpired from his journey from South Africa through to his Forbes Under 30 conference in Botswana and then ultimately to what transpired before his weird and mysterious end in the Democratic Republic of Congo, his own country. If you are ready for this true crime story, just buckle up and let's go. Now before we get into today's true crime story, Kindly support our campaign against femicide by going to the comment section and just type in please stop the femicide or hashtag say no to femicide. Also, our analytics show us that most of you watching our videos are not subscribed to our channel and this is adversely hurting the channel. Kindly hit the subscribe button if you are yet to subscribe and if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much. We appreciate the support. Now to the case at hand today. Christian Kazadi, a pioneer, a peace setter, a trendsetter, and a gentleman of all sorts. These are some of the accolades that have been used to describe him by people who know him. Christian Kazadi was originally resident in South Africa, but his roots are traced to the Democratic Republic of Congo, where his parents are said to have hailed from. Christian Kazadi is reported to have pioneered the concept of social media influencing in South Africa as far as brand and ambassadorial deal promotions are concerned. He is very influential in what was seen as something that was setting the pace in South Africa for being the first person to officially leverage on social media to promote brands. Thus, it wasn't surprising to see him rolling with various artists of all sorts and pushing their brand, which eventually led to him establishing a company called Click Media. At a very young age, Christian Kazadi was on the rise. At the point of his painful exit from this life, he was estimated to be worth around over $4 million together with his company, Click Media. So it was no surprise when at the age of 29 years old, Christian Kasadi was actually invited to Botswana for the Forbes Under 30 conference. Rumors have it that he was going to qualify to be part of those nominated to fall within that category of that prestigious recognition. Now, he was there for the conference in Botswana. He took pictures, they went on a safari, they had fun, and Christian was on the high. And rightly so. I personally believe that if you work hard, good things should come your way. And when good things come your way, you should enjoy it. And enjoy them, Christian did. Now, from Botswana, Christian Kazadi is reported to have decided to travel back to his native country of the Democratic Republic of Congo to attend a funeral of someone he allegedly knew. This is where things went south and this is where the mystery began because from this point on, the Christian Kazadi that most people knew and loved began to fade where in the end events will unfold which would question whether it was truly the Christian Kazadi that people knew who was caught up in this kind of mysterious situation or 
there was something in there that is yet to be understood or explained. What happened? When Christian Kazadi got to Congo, he informed family members he had landed, so they knew he was actually in Congo. Then he made his way eventually to the funeral grounds of this person he allegedly knew. It has been reported that as soon as Christian got to the funeral grounds, he made his way to stand by the people who are filing past the body laid in state in the casket. Before anyone could say Jack, Christian had made his way to the coffin and was now trying to get into the casket. People were trying to restrain him, but if you've seen Christian, he's very well built and very strong. He's a gym freak. So it wasn't an easy task trying to restrain him. And he eventually had his way by opening the coffin and at a point even getting in to lie on top of the person who had been laid in state in that coffin. I have seen the video myself, but for YouTube graphic policy, I can't show the video here, but I just couldn't understand why somebody would do this. More so, a CEO of that pedigree and a well-groomed gentleman like that. And this is where everything began not to make sense because several theories began to come up. Some people were saying that Christian was an occultist and that the person who had passed was his occult grandmaster and he needed to do all that as a ritual to gain some powers from him. Christian went on to try to put on his headphones. He would also be checking his watch as, as though he's behind time on something and the whole thing was just so weird i kept watching this video and i was asking myself what is going on so per the people pushing the occult conspiracy they then go on to further say that he was checking his time because he was behind time to finish performing the ritual i don't know if that is true or not but what i know is that Occults don't perform such rituals in public where everybody is at a funeral with them. They will most likely do this in secret. So for me, personally, I don't believe that Christian was an occultist and that what he was doing, that erratic behavior, was a form of a ritual. I don't believe so. But then, the video is still crazy because you see this guy do this and at a point, he gets whisked away by the police after some people had actually given him a bit of a beating and he didn't even react to the beating. It was as though he was possessed. And that is what takes us to the second theory out there where some people were saying he was possessed. But the question is, possessed by who? Or possessed by what? Then they bring it back to the spiritual occult issue that he was possessed by the spirit of the person whose funeral he attended. I also can't make any sense of that. The third theory then comes in where some people are saying that Christian was on drugs. That I begin to lean into a bit because there's a possibility that may have happened. However, Christian doesn't have a history of taking any drugs or any hard drugs for that matter and he doesn't also have a history of being a drunk. So it still doesn't make sense that he will decide to go to a funeral and abuse some substance that will then set him off in that erratic behavior. So although that could be possible, it was so unlike Christian. And the fourth theory is that maybe he just lost his mind due to grief or whatever. That is also a possibility, but it also doesn't seem likely. So the question then was, with all these conspiracy theories out there, how do we put this to rest? Obviously, there should be an autopsy, because Christian was actually whisked away by the police. So what happened thereafter? Christian would be found shot and dead. And to date, this crime happened somewhere in 2022 and to date, 2023, as at the time of making this video, 
there hasn't been any justice for Christian Gazadi. The people who took his life have not even been arrested, not to talk of they even being identified officially. Some people are of the view that this is a case that may never get solved because of the corruption and cover-ups in that country. But I can't speak to that. I've never been there before. I don't know what goes on there. But this is what some people are saying. Christian's family, I feel for them so much. Imagine how helpless you feel if you are one of his family members. Seeing your relative going through this in another country and they were not even there with him to lend any form of support. He was all alone by himself. Again, imagine seeing these videos of him on Facebook doing what he was doing at the funeral. All that will culminate into the need for them to have some closure by first of all finding out what's happened to Christian but there is no official autopsy report out yet. So to date, we don't even know the true cause of death of Christian Kazadi, not to talk of his perpetrators being also arrested and prosecuted for the family to get some closure and some justice. This is a case that is still pending. And I keep following up, I keep checking, but it looks like there's a stalemate. I'm hoping that before the end of this year, there would be some other pressure that will come in to level the playing ground such that the government of the Democratic Republic of Congo would also be able to push for this case to be resolved and the people who are culpable punished so the family can also find some closure. It's so sad when a young person like this who had such a promising future gets to go out like this. May he rest in peace, but then I pray that his family finds the strength to endure this difficult situation. Until then, we'll be following up on this case and we'll bring you updates as and when they are due. Like I've been saying, stay safe, keep an eye out, and we'll catch you next time.